What's up guys, Drew back again with Princess Craft RV. Today we are taking advantage of this beautiful day out on the lot. We are going to walk through the accessories and the appliances on the all new Mission Overland Summit. All right guys, so before we get into this presentation, just a couple uh, words about what this camper is and what the purpose is for. So uh, Mission Overland has set these campers up with upgraded suspension. You have a lock and roll hitch here up front. Uh, what that means for you is that this is designed to go completely off grid in the middle of nowhere over most ground grades and things like that. So with that being said, we're going to go through it in that capacity and talk like we would be going off grid. So what you see here is going to be the lock and roll hitch. Uh, this is of course the component that would be installed onto your vehicle's drop so you still do need a stinger or a drop or a rise depending on your um, specific vehicle and then you would orientate this like so as you back up to the unit you will come into it like so you have an oversized pin here that you would lock on there now when you're looking at this, you have multiple modes of articulation. So this is really, no matter kind of what terrain you're going over, what your vehicles are doing, you're gonna be fine here with this style of hitch. So that is the designation from the manufacturer. Uh, and then as always, we have our tow chains. Those are going to be crossed underneath that coupler and hooked onto your tow vehicle. Something like that. We do wanna make sure though that we do have enough room to make our turns left or right but not so much room that these may make contact with the pavement while towing down the road. Riding right next to those is going to be your emergency breakaway cable. This is going to hook onto a third or separate connection point on your receiver. Reason being is that if we have some of these other tow components become compromised, as the two vehicles separate, this is going to act like a ripcord to the electric brake system essentially trying to avoid like a runaway camper scenario. So once that pulls that pin, it's gonna put full 12 volts to those brakes, stopping the camper as soon as possible. Now also up front here, we have our seven way plug. This will plug into the corresponding receptacle on your tow vehicle. This is going to give you full function to your tow vehicle's charging system, marker lights, tail lights, brake lights, things like that. So once we've went ahead and successfully coupled the trailer to our tow vehicle, we will come back here to the tongue jack. Now, as you see, this is a manual tongue jack, easy up or down operation corresponding with the direction of the crank handle. We also have a double wheel here. Uh, what that's going to do for you is when you are on relatively reasonably smooth ground, you will, without any issues, be able to navigate this fairly easy by hand. Now, when we do want to go ahead and stow that jack away for travel, it's very easy. We have a spring pin here that is going to assist you in rotating that or locking that down. So we go ahead and pull that out, of course, with the weight off of the tongue or off of the jack, I should say, that would be far more easier. You're going to go ahead and remove that pin. As you do so, that jack is going to rotate into this position you would then go ahead and reinstall that pin that's going to keep that locked into that stowed position. Now if we back up here a little further we are going to be a, see a solar connection. Now this is going to be a direct connection to the battery and what this is going to allow us to do is take advantage of using a portable solar panel. So what that means for you is you have a direct plug and play connection here. We can then take our panel out into the sun park our unit in the shade and still take advantage of that solar power. Also up front here, we are going to see our full size spare with matching wheel. Taking a look here at our front storage compartment, we will go ahead and flip that handle out and then rotate that clockwise. That's going to open up that compartment for you. What we see in here is going to be our battery box. Now this unit does come standard with a group 27 deep cycle battery. And we see that there in play now. That is a maintenance free battery, so we don't have to worry about topping up that water level or anything like that. Um, moving on here, we have uh, again a further storage compartment, although you're not gonna really fit much in here. Uh, this is where that outside kitchen pulls out from, but I guess you do have, you know, six inches or so here uh, to do so. But do be careful, you got water lines and wiring and things ran through this compartment, so uh, kind of use at your own risk for storage. 
And then we have a sprayer here, which is pretty cool. So this disconnects like so. And we do have it clearly marked here as on and off. So if we go ahead and line everything up, we can just give that a counterclockwise rotation till it stops. Now this is plastic. We don't want to hammer it down or anything, but that's going to automatically pressurize this sprayer. Now it is an option for you, if you wish to do so, to add an outside tent room to the unit. Here at the wheel, we are going to talk about lug nut torque and tire pressure. Now with any camper tire, we want to run those at that max tire pressure. Uh, of course, when we are on the road. Now, if you are doing some serious kind of off-roading, you may air down to accommodate that. Now, this unit does have independent suspension and it is going to be equipped with Dexter hubs. Now, one thing to keep in mind is going to be going through the proper retorque procedure for the lug. Now, most manufacturers do recommend that you retorque those lugs on the initial 15, 25, 50 and 100 miles of your initial travel and then at the start of each trip there on after and we do want to torque those down to 100 foot pounds and make sure they are maintaining that level one thing we're going to find here on the exterior of the unit is just going to be a standard 12 volt porch light that will be switched on and off on the inside of the camper we will make sure that you get eyes on that when we make our way in there uh, and then down below here, we have our potable, potable water fill. Now this unit does come with a 37 gallon holding tank. Uh, to fill that up, we are going to take our drinking water hose. We're gonna stick that into the orifice and fill that till we are satisfied. Uh, of course, we cap it off here. Now there is a built-in 12 volt water pump with that unit that's going to pressurize that freshwater holding system, draw that water up to the fixtures and make it usable. And then beside that, we have our Truma exhaust vent. Now your Truma system is going to take a care of your hot water as well as your heat throughout the unit. So this is just an exhaust vent for that appliance. It is very important that we do let that breathe. So we're not going to want to restrict that flow. Don't put a lawn chair up in front of it. Uh, it does blow very hot air when it is on. So let's again, just make sure that that is free breathing. Here at the rear, we are going to take a look at our stabilizer jacks. Now, the operation of these is going to be uh, very similar to the manual tongue jack that we saw up front. So you have that manual crank handle here. We would then, of course, rotate that counterclockwise. You can see that that's going to lift that jack leg. And we are going to do that until we are fully retracted here. Now, we also do have that same spring pin assembly here. So we would just go ahead and remove that spring pin that's again going to allow us to pivot that jack out of the way. I think our direction of travel is going to be this way in this scenario. We're just going to repin that down, make sure it's not going anywhere when we're going down the road and we're gonna be good to go. Now coming up here, we have our 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. Now this will go ahead and utilize a twist clock, 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. So what that's going to look like for you is you will have two slanted receptacles on your power cord, one L shape. If we line everything up, that's going to plug straight in. We'll give this an eighth inch turn to the right that locks it in. We then do have a secondary collar here that we can lock down further. Here we find your entry step. Now this is a very standard unit that you will find on a lot of different campers. It's very easy. You just kind of slightly lift up, pull out towards you. It's going to lock in that outward position. And then when we want to stow it back, we just do the same thing. We lift up, it's gonna tuck in, it's gonna lock again into that uh, retracted position. All right guys, so a really cool feature about this particular unit is with a lot of these smaller um, kind of overlanding off-grid style campers, you kind of sacrifice the ability to have an air conditioner, uh, especially if you're not gonna be somewhere where you do not have 30 amp or 15 amp service. So. Uh, what Mission Overland has done is they have uh, included a battery charge, re a battery rechargeable cordless wireless AC here. So what we have here is the battery pack for that particular unit. Uh, before you go on your trip, you will need to charge that. You're going to do so with this power supply here. That will plug into any 15 amp outlet. Now, all, once that battery is charged, we take your AC unit, which we have here. We sit it on top of that battery pack. Now this can be a bit fiddly if you're not used to it. You're gonna slide it forward, that's gonna lock on. It kinda, kinda locks on there like a drill battery would. 
So once we've done that, we're good to go. We can take a look here at our controls here up at the top. Uh, you have a on off switch, uh, you know, plus or minus here for temperature and some other preset. Now you can expect to get about five hours of runtime off of that particular battery. And I believe this will uh, go down to about 55 degrees uh, temperature. And then once we've done that, we are going to connect it to the camper. Now, if you have ever owned another camper or done any other camper, this fitting is going to be uh, familiar to you. This is what they call a bayonet style fitting. This is a pretty genius idea on how to connect this to the camper. You see you have four prongs here along the outside and you have four keyholes here. What we do is we put this in the halfway position, probably something along those lines. We give it a quarter inch turn to the right there that's going to lock it on. Now this is a watertight, airtight connection here. That's going to of course feed that cold air into the unit. And then if we take a look here at the unit itself, we have our exhaust here. So let's make sure that these are free breathing. These are collapsible, so you can really kind of run this out if you need to. Um, but that's an excellent, excellent feature to this particular unit to have that ability to cool the unit wirelessly. Not something you're generally going to find on any unit that we carry. Uh, and this is my first time personally seeing this. Taking a look here at that outside kitchen, you're gonna see you have a locking bar here. So we just have to pull down and out on that. And you can see that's going to expose your pull out kitchen. What we have here is going to be our sink. Now this is going to be connected to your 12 volt water pump that's going to draw that water up from the tank to the fixtures. One thing to note is we do have your drain pipe here. That is going to transition through your floor here. So if you do not want to get the ground where you're staying at wet or whatever when you're using that sink, you're gonna to need to put this in a bucket or uh, some sort of catch uh, to aid in that. And then taking a look here at your cooktop here. Now this does have a built-in uh, igniter for you. This does connect to your propane bottle up front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that to light. Of course, we will activate that igniter there till we see our flame at the burner. We can then adjust to the intensity that we desire. Another very important component to your camping experience is going to be your refrigerator. So again, we're gonna utilize that pull-out handle to expose your Truma uh, 12 volt dual power refrigerator here. So uh, if we take a look here on the inside, you have two zones. You of course have a small freezer compartment as well as your refrigerator compartment here. It's nice that they've included uh, you know, a ton of different racks and styles uh, for different configurations and things like that. And then if we take a look down here, you're going to have your controls. What you see here is going to be on off and temperature is going to be set with these two. Now this has a ton of different options in terms of controls and presets and features and things like that. So if you have any questions on how to operate it other than that very basic explanation, feel free to go ahead and consult your user manual. That's going to outline those features further and give you a overall better understanding of how this appliance works. What we have here is going to be your three pound propane tank. This is going to come standard with this particular unit. Uh, of course, not a standard size, but very usable as it is. Um, the only things that are going to be running on propane in this particular unit are going to, of course, be your cooktop and your Truma system, which is going to be your boiler system. And that's how we're going to get heat and hot water throughout the unit. Uh, so this will be full for you at time of delivery. It connects or stows onto the camper very easily. You just set it there on that built-in shelf. You have a tension band here that will be at its longest point when it is fully extended here. We just go ahead and push that down and you can secure this uh, any way you like. So you can add a secondary pin uh, if you would like to do so and then we have our propane pigtail here now this is going to be a very standard connection that will just go ahead and screw on to our service valve of the tank once we have that secure we just open up our valve here this particular summit is going to be equipped with a overland awning and we're going to demo that for you here so we already have the storage bag unzipped so we're just going to flip that out of the way for us and then you can see we have some Velcro straps that are securing those support arms down. 
we're going to, of course, start by unvelcroing these. We'll see that fabric come down for us. And you have it, it's going to open in two directions. So it's going to swing this way and it's going to swing this way. So what we're going to do is swing it all the way around this way, as far as we can, I guess, with this other Mission Overland in our way. Can I clear that? So I'm not gonna be able to clear that, but the idea being is that this is going to swing all the way over to this area and will be secured here on this side. So that's going to give you full wraparound uh, coverage. And then we're gonna do the same on this side with kind of the second portion of that. So this is all, this half is going to go that way. We're then going to come here and remove this half. And again, this half is going to swing and give you full coverage and be secured to the unit right here up front. So you have full wraparound coverage with this particular awning. Now, once you've done that, you need to support these arms further. So what we have here is going to be our supports. And these are like telescoping. So you come out, you pick the length you need, you tighten that up and it's gonna hold that position. So these go into these arms here. You have like kind of like a roller ball assembly and that just snaps up in there like so. And this, if we were doing this one, we'd lift it up slightly to give it some tension, tighten that arm up. And then they have built in stakes here on the ground to keep that secure. Now, if you do need to secure it further, you are going to have a guide rope kit with the unit as well. And you have connection points on top of each one of these arms. Now you're ready to break camp and you wanna go ahead and put your awning away. So first things first, we are going to untie it here from the front rack. We will you know, wrap up our guide strings as necessary or completely remove them. Of course, at this point, we've already removed the legs and we are just going to swing this in. So your front side or front half is going to swing in first. So once we have that kind of close, we can follow it with this other side here. Of course, once we remove the guide rope from this side, swing it over. Once we have both the arms in, we need to re-roll this fabric up it's always very hard to get that to fit back in the package as, as many things are. So uh, kind of trying your best to follow the way that you took it out. And they kind of do this in, in sections here to make that as kind of a, as reasonable of a package as you can. And you wanna make sure you don't make the mistake that I did and close the awning over your Velcro uh, closures there. So with that exposed, I just, Tighten that back down. And if you've done that satisfactory, it will all fit back in the storage bag. Right inside the door here, first things up is going to be the Truma system. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times here in this presentation, this is going to be our boiler system. So that's going to provide us with hot water as well as heat throughout the unit. Uh, so when we go to operate this, the controls are very simple. So you have your uh, kind of selection button here, which is going to almost be like a volume knob that's going to uh, switch in between the different modes. And then to select the mode, we just push that center button. So once we've kind of woke it up and push that center button once, that's going to actually take us into that menu control. And you can see as I turn this knob, it corresponds uh, with the different sources here. So the little RV with the uh, thermometer on it's going to be our heat. So once I go ahead and select that, uh, we can see as I rotate this, we can actually choose a temperature and then I'll press to go ahead and confirm that. And then we can come here and this is actually a thermometer in water. So that's going to be our hot water. So I uh, push again to confirm that. We have a couple different options we have uh, Eco, which is of course going to give us the highest efficiency rating. We have just standard hot uh, or we have boost. Now in this boost mode, what it's going to do is it is going to 
Um, put all available power into heating as much water as it can as quickly as it can. So if we are trying to run the furnace or the heat at the same time as we are in boost mode, it's going to momentarily power down the heat and put, again, all available power into heating as much water uh, as it can as quickly as it can. And then our next selection here is going to be our sources. So if I go ahead and confirm that, we can see that we have a gas option. We have a mix option as well, which it's going to use um, gas as well as uh, electricity, and it will kind of choose which one it uses as, as, you know, as it wishes. Uh, generally, these kind of things will use the propane to get the water hot because that is going to be the quickest, most efficient option. And then it'll use the electric side of things to uh, maintain that temperature. So if we get back into there, we have a mix two. Uh, the difference between mix one and mix two is one is going to have a higher uh, electricity consumption rate than the other. And we will see that again, if we go just into the electricity systems, you kind of have again, a higher low option with that. Uh, the reason why you would want maybe want to use that lower option is if you're running this unit off a small generator or something like that, that's going to keep that generator from spiking too high, uh, especially ran in conjunction with some of these other appliances. And then the last kind of option on here that we're going to see or setting uh, is going to be our fan speed. Now that of course it has to do with the uh, heat. And once I get into that setting again, we can see we have that uh, eco or efficient mode. We have a high uh, and that's it. So you have eco and high. And then the rest of the stuff down here is of course, this is how we are going to set uh, different like, like time and temperature. So we can have that furnace or that water heater kick on uh, at designated temperatures. And then furthermore here, it's indicating that we have a code or that there's an issue with the lighting cycle. Of course, we don't have the propane on. We're not hooked up to shore power. Uh, and that's why we're seeing that. Now, if that was a legitimate code, I would click on it. It's going to tell me what the code is. And then I press again to either dismiss it. Of course, in this case, it's not going to dismiss because uh, we're not actually operating the appliance. And then this clock here is going to be how we set that display clock. So it was just going to be a clock. And then we have our settings here. Uh, of course, you can see some different setting options there. Do keep in mind that you'll want to further research this particular appliance before we get into that setting menu uh, and start switching things around. Um, so down here, we have our light switch here. We have our cabin light switch that's going to correspond with an LED light strip that runs uh, along both sidewalls. We have our lights here. These are going to be our uh, exterior lights, I believe. We have our water pump here. These last two buttons here on the display, now this is a generic kind of switch panel. We only have these three that come into play. These last two are open. So what that means for you is you can go ahead and add your own accessories if you would like to do so, or you can just leave them as is. Down below that, we of course have a digital voltage display here. Uh, now again, out on the lot filming this video, we've kind of ran through that battery. We have a a uh, half dead jump box hooked up to it. So that's why we're seeing that low voltage reading. And then we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle there. And then we have a dual USB uh, charging station as well. And then down here, we have our converter breaker box. Uh, what you're going to find here on your left side is going to be your 110 volt AC breakers. Now those are resettable for you. And then on the right side, we have our automotive blade style fuses. Uh, those are replaceable and you will go ahead and pick up a variety pack of fuses Keep them with the unit in the event that you do need to go ahead and change one out on the road Taking a look here at our air Excel remote now this controls that max air fan that's going to be on the ceiling So if we go ahead and take a look here, we of course have our on off button here uh, That's going to turn the appliance on and raise the vent fan uh, and get it going. So we have a couple different adjustments here. Up or down with these arrows is going to control fan speed in 10% increments. The left to right plus or minus is going to set a thermostatic temperature. So we can see the room temp in here is 87 degrees and the set temp, it set temp is 67. Uh, and that fan is going to run until it reaches that temperature and will shut off at that time. We can also switch directions of that fan. So if we want to um, you know, vent 
air from the camper we can or if we want to draw in outside air we can also do that we can also shut that lid and continue to have that fun fan run if we want to circulate the air that we already have within the camper taking a look here at the locking mechanisms of the cabinet doors we just have a push button style there it's spring loaded then this will go ahead and open of course pushing that in will keep all your gear secured bouncing down the road and then down low here we have our fire extinguisher of course this is a very important piece of safety equipment uh, and we need to inspect and test our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out for this particular appliance we are just going to take a look here at the pressure indicator letting us know that we do have full pressure and in the event that we need to use the fire extinguisher it's going to be in good working order for us next up is going to be our uh, nice butcher block table now this is going to be mounted on a lagoon table mount so what that means for you is this is kind of endlessly positionable you can kind of move this out of your way uh, as needed now uh, going down the road you want to make sure that this is secure so it's not kind of moving at its leisure and to do so you're going to use these handles now you have three of these handles along uh, and, and the way that these operate is, of course, in this, in this scenario, our travel is not interrupted as it would be down here. Uh, and, and maybe this one would be a better example to show you. So if I'm trying to remove this, I'm going to unscrew it or go counterclockwise. And as you can see, I hit this uh, piece of the camper. So what I do then is I pull out on that handle that's going to release the gearing and allow me to get a fresh turn on that. So with that in mind, I would go ahead and separate these pieces uh, by doing that with all of them. So in, just because I started here, I'm going to do this one first. Uh, in all reality, it makes more sense to separate the tabletop from the arm first. Uh, but with that being said, I will go ahead and remove that. Of course, I already loosened that one, so it fell to the floor as well. And that's going to um, give me the view of this one. So again, I go to rotate it. I'm interrupted here by the tabletop. I pull out. That allows me to get a fresh turn so I can loosen it enough to go ahead and remove it. And if I wish to do so, we see that we have a corresponding track here. Now I could reassemble these arms and then attach that onto that track and that's going to keep everything together and self-contained. So this tabletop, when separated from those lagoon is going to drop down here on these slats. This is going to play a, a pivotal part uh, in your making your sleeping area. Uh, so you're just going to take that tabletop and set it on these tracks. Of course, I can't do so with my legs in the way. So we're just going to pretend. And once I've done that, I take this extra cushion and of course it's cut to the same size as that tabletop. It's going to rest on top of there, filling out this sleeping area. What we have here is going to be another very important piece of our safety equipment. This is going to be our carbon monoxide propane leak detector. And as with all of our safety equipment, we do need to go ahead and test that every single time we take the unit out. With this particular unit, it is going to be wired into the 12 volt section of the camper. So there's no batteries to change or maintain. Uh, it does have a single test button on it. And once we were to push that, uh, it will indicate to us that it is in good working order with a series of light flashes and an audible tone. We are going to make sure that we do test that every single time we take the unit out. So one thing to mention is on each side of these bench seats, you are going to find some additional storage. So uh, they're going to utilize that same spring loaded kind of locking mechanism that we've seen on the other cabinetry. But once we open that up, you can see you do have a quite a bit of extra space. Taking a look at how we operate the window shades and windows, um, of course, you can see the frame here. If we pull down from the top, that's going to provide us with a screen option uh, in the event that we want to go ahead and open that window, take advantage of that airflow. Uh, this is going to keep you know reasonable amount of bugs from entering into the unit. And then if we would like our privacy, we can pull up from the top. Uh, of course, that's going to block out most light as well. And then if I separate those shades, they will go back into their corresponding positions and that will expose our window latches. So to open this up, I just go ahead and unlatch it from each side. 
Now this window does have three opening positions. You're gonna be alerted of that position with an audible click. And that would, would be the second one. And then the last one's going to be wide open. Now, if I want to go ahead and close it from any one of those positions, I just need to lift past that position. But before the next click, it's going to come in. And then if we go ahead and take a look here at the latch, we have a couple options there as well. If I go right into the middle of that plastic channel, that window is still open. It's kind of in vent mode. So what that's going to allow us to do is be relatively secure within the camper, but still have some airflow entering. If we're having any condensation issues, uh, it may be good to go ahead and utilize that. Now, when we need to close the window, we pull all the way past that back plastic piece and lock that down for travel. Above my head here, we are going to find our nine volt smoke alarm. Uh, this is of course gonna be ne needed to be tested every time we take the unit out as well. It's also going to be my further recommendation that we do keep a spare nine volt battery with the unit uh, in the event that we were to need to change that out when we were kind of off grid or in the middle of nowhere. So when erecting the roof here, uh, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and unlatch these uh, two bungees here that are gonna keep that down when traveling. So once we went ahead and unlatched the roof from the base here on the outside, uh, it's as simple as just pushing up until you stop and then you want to secure that. So what we're gonna do is uh, momentarily remove these bungees and we have this support arm that's going to come down and we have a pin here that is spring loaded that will need to be removed so um, of course this is going to be the locking position of that pin all you do is push against that screen or that that spring and rotate this into that position and you're going to be able to move remove that so with that being said i line up the arm here i insert that pin and push against it make sure that that keeper rotates and that's going to be locked on and secured all right guys we hope you enjoyed that walkthrough here of the mission overland summit uh, we hope we answered some questions for you if there's something you missed or something you would like to see more of please don't hesitate to give us a call or comment below thank you so much for your time we really really appreciate it i hope you have an amazing day thank you so much